Hello, and thank you for joining uh, another installment of the Smith Camp Family Honors College Fireside Chats. Today, I have with me Brent Hansen, and he is from Templeton, California, graduated from Templeton High School in 2002. He was admitted as a member of the fourth cohort of the Smith Camp Family Honors College and graduated cum laude in 2006 with his Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration option in Marketing. He was named the Outstanding Undergraduate for the Marketing Department and was nominated for two Dean's Medals. During his time at Fresno State, Brent was highly involved in on-campus activities and organizations. He was elected as an ASI official three times, which included his term as Student Body Executive Vice President and was a four-term elected official of the Council of President Scholars, serving two years as president. He was a founding member of the Red Zone, the first student athletic booster club on campus, and he sat on more than 10 different boards and steering committees. During his senior year, he interned with the Fresno Grizzlies. Somehow, he also found time to serve as Fresno State mascot timeout for two years. After graduation, Brent started his career working for the auxiliary services at Fresno State. Over the last 11 years, he has worked in various sales roles in the financial sector and is currently the regional director of sales for Rectangle Health, a financial technology company specializing in the healthcare sector. He manages over half of the company's nationwide outside sales force. So welcome Brent, very excited to have you today. Hey, thanks so much, Ashley. Really appreciate the time and uh... Man, I tell you, it's uh, it's a walk down memory lane sometimes hearing uh, some of those stories. And man, I wish I could go back to some of those good old days in, uh, at Fresno State, that's for sure. Yeah, so we'll be touching on some of those fond memories today. But let's first get started with how you chose the Honors College. Wow, yeah, um, it's, it's kind of an interesting story. So I was actually born in Fresno. Uh, my parents were born and raised. Uh, in the Valley and we moved to Templeton uh, when I was in going into second grade. I then completed all my time at Templeton and Fresno State wasn't even on my map of where I wanted to go to school. Uh, I didn't know anything about the Honors College, had never heard anything. Again, I was set, my goal was just to go to Cal Poly uh, here just down uh, the road from home. We went to a uh, college career fair night, if you will, at a local community college. Uh, and the provost at the time, Dr. Michael Ortiz, was working the Fresno State booth. And uh, he and my mom struck up a conversation and explained the Smith Camp program. And uh, a few weeks later, we went to information days uh, in uh, the Satellite Student Union. That would have been the fall of uh, 2001, uh, right after it was two weeks after 9-11 happened. And I met Dr. Rodemeyer and Lisa and Stephanie for the first time and um, fell in love with the program, applied and was lucky enough to be admitted. So uh, my time of planning or wanting to go to Fresno State literally happened in a period of about three weeks. Oh, that's a great story. So when you look back on your college experience, what is your favorite memory? Oh, geez. Uh, there definitely are lots of memories. Um, you know, I look back at my time at Fresno State and I, I really did just cherish absolutely every opportunity that I had. Uh, I tried to make the most of every minute that I had while attending State. You know, I look back to some of the memories that I, I cherish are, are the friendships that uh, I made during the Honors College. Uh, not only just with Honors College uh, students, but with other students at State as well. Um, some of my dearest friends to this day are uh, those folks that I met during my four years at Fresno State. You know, looking back and being able to go into the Honors College office when you just maybe had a bad day or needed a break and needed to go veg out for a little while, always knowing that you had camaraderie waiting for you when those doors opened, whether it was uh, Lisa or Stephanie greeting you with a smile or uh, Dr. Rodemeyer giving him giving one of his, uh, you know, chemistry talks or anything like that. Um, you know, I, I just cherish those days of, um, you know, being with people that truly are going to be lifelong friends of mine. Uh, and we all went through it together and we all got through it together and supported each other. 
Um, so I, I just loved it. And you, you can't be going uh, to Bulldog Stadium as well on a Friday or Saturday night and uh, cheering the dogs on and uh, watching them beat Boise State at home uh, and watching folks rush the field uh, in 2005, I think it was. Uh, that was a that was a pretty cool moment as well. Got it. Yeah, I think a lot of people do talk about the camaraderie amongst you know classmates. I know some people refer to it as ha like having a small liberal arts college, you know, within a larger university in terms of the close knit relationships that are developed and then the opportunity that exists as well. So yeah, look, I mean you think about the honors college you know it's the smith camp family honors college now i know obviously the term family refers to the smith camps themselves as they were the ones that originally endowed the scholarship but i think you know from another connotation it really did explain what the call honors college was it was a family and it still is a family and you can go into any room now and you walk in and say hey i was a smith camper um, and you instantaneously great, gain credibility and you, you get that family mentality of, oh my gosh, so was I, you know, what year were you? And it just, everyone went through it, maybe at different times, uh, but we all had the same experience. And again, the, the staff, uh, whether it be again, Lisa or Stephanie or, you know, Dr. Rodemeyer, and then obviously now Dr. Attar and, um, you know, Dr. Chapman and, Every, everyone who has been involved with the Honors College is just, they're just fantastic people. Uh, and we're just so lucky to have all of them. So with the, the relationships you created with the people in your cohort, do you felt like that allowed you to maybe expand your horizons more? Or how did the program, you know, allow you to get to where you are today? Is there any specific things you can think of where it provided additional opportunities for you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I take it all back to my second semester of freshman year when uh, student government elections were ramping up. And I didn't really know much about ASI. I knew a little bit, uh, but there was another uh, freshman in the Honors College, Brittany Yamamoto. So we'll give a shout out to Britt. Uh, she was gonna run for student government and she talked with me about it. She knew my background uh, and said, hey, maybe we should try running together and we should do this. And one thing led to another. And I really look at that as being kind of the, the kickoff point for my involvement. And if it wasn't for being in the Honors College and knowing someone else that was running, I might not have never, I, I might not have ever done it. Uh, and the involvement that I had through student government and ultimately clubs and organizations and different boards and steering committees I sat on is literally what led me to my first job of working for the auxiliary corporations and uh, Debbie A. Stone. Uh, I was at a food services meeting one day. It was my last semester at state and people were asking what I was doing. I had a couple job offers, but I jokingly said, hey, if anyone has, is hiring, let me know. And Debbie headed me off in the parking lot and we had a great conversation. And a couple weeks later, I uh, was lucky enough to be offered a position with the Auxiliary Corp. So I look back, none of this would have happened if I wouldn't have been in the Honors College and come across the conversation with uh, Britt that day. Yeah. No, that's great. And I think that a lot of students have had similar experiences where they we didn't even think something was an option to them until talking to someone else and, you know, and then, yeah, just seeing additional opportunities. So that's great. Thanks for sharing. And then Absolutely. looking, sounds like a lot of good stuff has happened. Is there anything that you would have done differently in hindsight? Oh, man. I mean, you can always look back and, and try to nickel and dime things here and there. But honestly, I... I don't think there's much I would have done different, quite frankly. Uh, there were a couple things that maybe I would have done a little different with my schedule. I probably would have tried to have found a little more time for uh, some more fun classes, maybe a, a few things outside of just, uh, you know, standard curriculum. But honestly, I, I had a pretty darn good time my four years. I felt like I had, I, I did well from an academic standpoint. 
Uh, I was involved with a lot of different things. Um, again, being able to be the mascot, trying to fit that in the year that I was student body vice president and involved with cops. It was, I look back and I don't know how the heck I did it, but uh, I, I came out on the right side of everything. So honestly, outside of maybe taking a few different classes just to break up some of my, you know, full blown schoolwork, I, I don't think there's much I would have done different. Great. And so you were a business of administration major with an emphasis in marketing. So what led you to select that as your major? So when we came for information days, uh, I actually thought I wanted to go into medicine. Uh, I had had this dream of uh, going into medicine since I was a kid. Um, chemistry wasn't my greatest uh, subject. Uh, Dr. Attar can probably attest to that. He was my Chem 10H teacher my freshman year. I did do a great Gatorade presentation though, which he remembers well. Um, but, you know, chemistry just wasn't really my thing. Uh, the sciences, I enjoyed them, but I just found they weren't really a passion. Uh, I come from a family of salespeople. I come from a, a lineage of people who have been entrepreneurs, have started their own businesses, etc. So that just kind of led me to the business school. And I knew that with a foundation uh, in biz admin that I really could kind of go whatever direction I wanted after that, if I wanted to look into some specialties. So um, again, I, I coming into state, I thought I was going to be a pre-med major and uh, made that change before I actually stepped on campus. And uh, I look at the professors that I had through the business schools, the you know, Dr. Rice's of the world and Susan Geringer, Dr. Geringer, um, you know, I, I'm i just so thankful that I got to learn under such phenomenal mentors. Well, and it sounds like you made your way back to medicine. So you are you know, currently working in that sphere. So tell me a bit about that journey and, you know, how, yeah, how you got to where you are now. Yeah, um, again, it all started with my foundation at State and, you know, having the way that I found out about the world that I'm in now was literally because of a project that I was doing for the Auxiliary Corp. Um, we needed to implement some new payment options for our dining and housing areas. Uh, I did a little bit of research on it, found out about this world of uh, payment processing and such. and. Uh, that's what took me away from Fresno State. Uh, spent six years with a company called First Data, now Fiserv. Uh, climbed the ranks. I mean, started with just carrying a bag and putting holes in my shoes and uh, knocking on a lot of doors with closing business. Um, had an opportunity to manage a team. Uh, did pretty well with that. And one thing kind of led to another. Uh, with Rectangle Health, uh, have been with them now just coming up on three. Uh, it was just, again, my background and everything that I had been taught over the years, again, taking from my uh, toolage at Fresno State and then just putting a little bit of my own spin on it. That's what kind of led me to where I am today. So, yeah, it is nice being able to go into medical offices and kind of always thinking like, man, what if, what if, what if this was my name on the door and I had someone coming in, uh, you know, as a consultant trying to provide me with a service. Uh, but yeah, it's it's great. So it's, um, you know, a good group of folks that I work with. Uh, my team spans throughout the Western United States. So uh, I get to travel a little bit and see different parts of uh, the U.S., which is great. Uh, but it's always great to come back home here to uh, the Central Coast. And I would imagine with the pandemic, it put a little bit of a pause on the travel for a bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. For a year and a half, I uh, did not have to sleep in a Marriott bed or fly in a United Airlines plane. So it was kind of nice uh, being having that break. But uh, now it's back and it, it's good. So it's it's still nice to get out and be able to just have that one on one uh, human interaction. So instead of doing everything via Zoom these days. Do you find you're working at the same or traveling the same pace you did prior to the start of the pandemic or is it a bit more hybrid? Yeah, great question. Uh, it definitely has gone more to the hybrid model uh, it, to the point where in 2019 and starting in 2020, before the pandemic hit, I was on the road almost every week. Uh, now I'm on the road about two to three times a month. 
So I've got at least one or two weeks throughout the month where I just commit to staying at home, obviously through the pandemic with the use of video conferencing and such, it's just become the norm. So uh, a lot more uh, of our business can be done that way. And a lot more of my interaction with my teammates can occur via those uh, virtual meetings. So yeah, I'm definitely not traveling as much, uh, which is nice, but I still do get to get out and about every so often. Yeah, nice balance. So that's yep. great. Yep. So you moved back to where you grew up. And so tell me a little bit about that decision and what prompted you to stay on the central coast versus maybe go into a big metro area. Yeah, so uh, after I graduated from state, uh, again, stuck around for a few years in Fresno uh, and Fresno and Templeton were literally the only two towns or cities that I knew uh, in life. Those are the two places that I lived, uh, whether it was, you know, growing up or in college or right after college. So I was ready to try something new. So uh, when I left uh, the auxiliary corporation, uh, had the opportunity to go up to Monterey, lived in Monterey for three years, which was fantastic. And as a lifelong golfer, it was, it's the Mecca of golf. So that was pretty cool as well. Uh, but then I did do the big city life, uh, lived down in Long Beach for three years, uh, had my first team that I managed was all throughout Southern California. So uh, everything from Los Angeles to Orange County out to the high desert uh, and down into San Diego. So I feel like I got my fill of the big city uh, after three years and decided it was finally time to come back home after somewhat being away for about uh 14 years or so at that, 13 years at that point. Uh, I was just ready to make Templeton my my forever home. Uh, my parents still live in my childhood home, so I'm a mile down the road from them and uh, their property, which is great. So uh, I've got my parents down the road. Uh, so it's, it's great. It's our little slice of paradise, quite frankly, over here. So, uh, and the wine, wine isn't too bad here either. Nice. Do you find that you go wine tasting quite a bit? Oh man, I tell you, it's uh, it's an expensive hobby. I'll tell you that, but it is uh, well well worth uh, our weekend. So, yeah, anytime friends come to town, that's always what they want to do. They want to go out to some new wineries that they haven't been to. Uh, we're definitely fortunate where we live. Uh, we have right now right around 400 bonded wineries here in uh, North County. So. It is not that we uh, can't figure out a new place to go uh, on a weekend. So it's, especially this time of year, it's starting to warm up and uh, you're starting to get uh, some bud break beginning. Uh, you know, it's it's great to start seeing what's uh, to come with the new vintage. So yeah, we uh, we try to get out and, you know, again, it's, it's just a requirement, I think, of living here on the Central Coast. You just have to go out and taste the wine. I mean, it's the least we can do, right? There you go. And I'm guessing it helps with stress management as well, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it uh, it does. And I tell you, during that time of uh, just being here at home and not traveling, it was it was too easy to just go walk over to the wine cellar and open the door and just say, oh, well, you know, it's it's close to five o'clock. So let's uh, let's just go ahead and crack one of those open. So what other techniques do you have for handling stress? Because I would imagine with a team across the country, there's probably some high stressful times. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you know, you've got to find time for yourself. Uh, I try to get out to the golf course a minimum of once a week. That's my stress reliever. Um, during the summer when the hours, the sunlight sticks around and we get a few more hours in our day, uh, I try to go out at least once in the afternoon with uh, some friends. We have a, a standing game that occurs uh, midweek, but we're able to get out there by about 4.30 or so and, um, you know, play as many holes as we can. But, you know, the big thing is you've got to find time for yourself. You've got to find time to relax and unwind, um, you know, no matter what role it is, whether you're managing people, whether you're an individual contributor, you've got to make sure you have that work-life balance. So whether it's me going out to the golf course, uh, spending time with family and friends, um, you know, I, I do my best to try to find time for just me, uh, but it can be a challenge at times. So you know, I, I would tell anyone, 
you know, just like we use our calendars to manage our days during the work days, you know, calendar those times to require yourself to, to take some time off, to uh, find those gaps in your days where you can do a little bit more for yourself. Uh, find something you're passionate about and just find something that you can completely turn the work clock off on uh, and just have some time for yourself. Good advice. And I think a lot of people have um, experienced you know, challenges with that, with being in lockdown and whatnot, but a re, you know, a pronounced need for it, I think has surfaced for many people. Yeah. So yeah, without a doubt. And, you know, I tell everyone, I mean, I'm guilty of it, right? I mean, we've all got these things hanging around us at all times. I mean, I have, I have two of them. One's work, one's personal. And it's something that I've definitely been trying to be more cognizant of is leaving the work phone behind, not having it with you after hours all the time. Now, of course, sometimes you're gonna have to have it with you, but you need to make sure that you can make clean breaks every so often. So outside of work, what is keeping you busy these days? Golf. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, I mean, swinging the golf club as much as possible. Um, you know, obviously as a, as a homeowner, uh, you get to do everything on your own. So, you know, there through the pandemic, we came across lots of different projects that, you know, we wanted to, uh, we wanted to tackle and the pandemic provided us with, uh, the time in our days to do that. So, uh, definitely did quite a bit around the house and some projects that we had been hoping to do. Um, you know, being able to be around family and friends, uh, you know, spending time with my parents, uh, again, as we all get a little bit older. Uh, you know, they're uh, both at a point where, you know, I'm spending a little more time there just helping with things uh, around their house, uh, which has been great to be able to uh, spend more time with them. But yeah, I mean, honestly, trying to get outside as much as possible, trying to get uh, out of the house and not in front of a computer screen or uh, a phone screen uh, is, is really what I look forward to. So again, whether it's the golf course, whether it's going out, uh, to a winery or two, uh, going on some of the great hikes here on the Central Coast that we have to offer. Uh, I try to get myself outside as much as humanly possible. Great. And I know before we started this official interview, we talked about you're a reader for the Honors College um, yeah. applications. And what I know you've been involved with speaking to students at Colloquium. Um, can you share a little bit about the different ways that you're giving back to not only the Honors College, but Fresno State as a whole? Yeah, again, I mean, the Honors College will always hold a special place in my heart. And um, I get asked all the time for, you know, donation requests, et cetera, as I'm sure all of us as alumni do. Um, the Honors College will be where I continue to give funds because I know I know what was done for me and for my cohort and colleagues and, you know, whether it be the folks before me or after me, uh, there was an investment that was put into us. We were, um, we were the ones that they believed in. We were the folks that they chose to carry on this tradition. And it's just so powerful to me. So I choose to give back to the Honors College every year, whether it be through the day of giving uh, you know, whether it be monetarily, whether it be through time and service, again, like you made mention with reading applications, um, you know, Dr. Attar or Stephanie or anyone could call me at any time. And if there was something that they needed that I could help out with and feasibly do, I would do it in a heartbeat. So, uh, and again, whether it's sitting down and having this uh, hour with you today and being able to you know, hopefully give back uh, through just some of the words that I share today, um, you know, whether it be with folks uh, that are in the Honors College now, or maybe you're considering the Honors College or our alums, uh, you know, continuing to help, you know, my, my fellow SMIC campers any way I can, whether it be connecting them with the right people for their career, et cetera. Um, it, it truly is, again, we go back to that family word and uh, anything that I can help with, um, you know, I'll always make sure to lend a helping hand to uh, uh, the Honors College uh, and then ultimately the university. Right. Yeah, and I think that that's really what creates that great experience, not only for, you know, 
us who were part of it before, but paying it forward to the students who are there now. So, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, let's transition to rapid fire questions. Um, uh -oh. All right. Start... See if I'm ready for them. <laughs> we'll start with some questions about your college days. What was your favorite course? Oh, geez. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to say there were two. Uh, the first was marketing 100, uh, with Bill Rice. That was my first marketing class and, uh, got me hooked on me that I made the right decision to go the marketing option. Uh, the second, uh, a close second, maybe at times, even the first was my senior year. It was Enology 65. I think something like that. It was the art of wine. Uh, it was a once a week class where we drank wine middle of the week. We would talk about it before and then the professor, uh, would pop open half a dozen or so bottles of wine. We would do tastings. We would, uh, appreciate the wine and not a bad way to break your week up. Uh, your last year, your last semester at Fresno state. For sure. I didn't get a chance to take that class, but it, I always heard students talk highly about it. So. Yeah, and it, it was a it was a lab class too, so I felt like you know it was it was really a, uh, scientific endeavors too. <laughs> right. Yes, and like you, I'm a business major, or I was a business major, so yeah, we didn't have those heavy science lab time like um, the science students yep. did. Yeah. Because that. Was a big chunk of their time each week was in mm -hmm. the And yeah, so next question is your favorite professor. Oh, geez. Um, so again, I go, I go back to, you know, Bill Rice from a, uh, you know, standpoint of someone who truly, you know, coached me, took me under their wing and believed in me. Uh, so for someone that I actually had as a professor, I would definitely say Dr. Rice. Um, but, you know, the late Stephen Rodemeyer, even though he was never uh, my actual professor, uh, he did definitely help me many a time, uh, you know, with different questions that I had. And, um, you know, I wish I would have been able to take a class from him. Uh, but I would say that I got pretty lucky spending four years with him when he was the director of the Honors College. Yes, he mentored and impacted all of us. Mm -hmm. Um. Your favorite place to eat on campus, and what did you order? Oh, geez. Um, favorite place to eat? Well, it there were a lot of changes while I was at the university. Things, you know, uh, changed quite a bit. Um, I always thought when I was an actual student, if you like went and ate in the vintage room, that was a big deal. Like you had to have known someone or. You know, you had to, even though anyone could technically have gone in there and eaten there, but no one really realized you could as a student. Um, but it was always cool when a professor would take you there or an administrator would take you there. Um, you know, it was really cool. Like you, you went and had a real, real meal there and not just something from the dining hall. So I would say probably, probably the vintage room back in the day, if that's what it was even called when I was a student. I know that's what it was when I, when I left the university. I think that's what it was when I was there though. Yeah, I can vision exactly where it is on campus. Yep, yep, right behind, I guess, I don't know if it's still Taco Bell there. It was like right behind the Taco Bell at the time. So, yep. All right, so let's talk about present day. What is something your classmates would be surprised to hear that you're doing now? She's surprised. Um, Gosh, I don't know. Um, I think most people probably like what they saw was what they got out of me. Um, I don't know. I mean, probably that I I do I, with living here on the Central Coast. I mean, the amount of wine that we have in the household uh, is uh, enough to probably start a winery at some point. Um, so yeah, outside of that though, I. I don't know. I don't think I have anything that's really a big surprise uh, at this point. And then what is, what are you most excited about right now? Most excited about, uh, 2022 is going to be a good year. There's uh, some good stuff on the horizon, um, you know, personally and professionally. Uh, we've obviously had a couple of really challenging years. 
Uh, we've had some challenges uh, just on the family front with some health issues with uh, some folks in the family, but uh, have got some great outlooks as we go into 2022. So uh, you never know what, uh, what might be coming here this year. So I'm sure uh, for those that you know, I'm connected to either on Facebook or LinkedIn. Uh, there, there might be some updates coming up here in the not so near future. And then what book are you reading? Um, so I just got a book actually. Um, it's, I, I literally just started it. It's what got you here won't get you there. Um, it's basically a book about, you know, continuing to reinvent yourself, continuing to look at uh, how to make change, not only professionally, but personally as well. Thinking about all the lessons that you've learned and what got you to your current role or your current state, um, you're gonna need something else to take you to that next level. So again, thinking about what got you here is great, but then thinking about what you're going to need to get to that next step. So. It's uh, it really focuses on, you know, really kind of pushing the limits of yourself and and what you're trying to accomplish. There's a I read a book, I think it might have been co-authored by the same person. Mm -hmm. And when I was reading that one, um, I think what really resonated with me was something that my HR manager has said, which is, you know, don't overuse your strengths to the point that they become a weakness. Mm -hmm. And so I that that's you know along the same vein in terms of just you know making sure that you're adapting to the current situation and not relying on the skills and you know things that you did that got you to where you are now so. yeah i mean complacency i see it all the time um you know in my role working with salespeople um that you have a little bit of success you get complacent and think oh this is easy i can do this i I'm here at this level now, I'm just used to it. Too often do I watch folks that uh, we have to have those difficult conversations of, hey, what, what got you to where you are is not what's gonna continue. You've gotta continue to reinvent yourself. Um, yes, you've had a great career. Yes, you've had a great start to your career, whatever it might be, but you've always gotta be trying to push the limits and trying to continue to reinvent yourself um, because everyone else is this day and age. So you've gotta to continue to keep yourself relevant as well. Is there a book that you've reread multiple times or gifted to someone else? Uh, Good to Great, um, Jim Collins uh, is one of my favorite go-to books. Um, you know, talking about the concept of how do you take a good company, a good team, a good group of individuals trying to accomplish the same thing and make them a great group. Uh, you know, the concept of getting the right people on the bus, uh, it's not necessarily just about their uh, skill level. It's a lot about their will. It's a lot about their desire. Uh, so uh, anyone who is involved with either managing teams, working in teams, uh, hiring folks, uh, I would definitely recommend Good to Great. Uh, it's a phenomenal read. Agreed. Yeah, that's a commonly read book at my company as well. Mm -hmm. What is one piece of advice you'd give to current students? Get involved. Uh, stay active. I had the opportunity to talk with a, a colloquium uh, group. Oh, this is about a year or so ago. And I talked a lot about just building your brand. Um, you think about the time that you spend at Fresno State, it's gonna go back, it's gonna go by in a just blink of an eye. Build your brand, be involved, be inquisitive, ask questions, figure out groups you wanna get involved in. Um, you know, try to, try to make the most of your four years at State because again, it's going to go by in an instant. Um, you know, you have the opportunity to really build your um, legacy. You get to try things without a lot of repercussion. Um, you can choose a wrong class or, you know, go down a path of a major that maybe you thought sounded great, but then you got into it and you decided to do something else. And that's fine. College is, is about that. It's making some of those, you know, changes on the fly. It's a lot more difficult to do that once you're into your career and after you've gone through schooling and such. So 
Um, be involved, find things you're passionate about, uh, learn to the best of your ability, uh, ask questions and always just desire more. The opportunities that, that Fresno State can provide you with are endless. Uh, it's just what you decide to do with them. So again, be inquisitive, um, figure out things that you're passionate about, get involved. Uh, and if they don't exist, create them. Uh, Fresno State allows for fantastic opportunities for us to uh, really understand, you know, more about what we're looking for as a student. Uh, and if you don't have an opportunity that uh, you really want to have, then go create it for yourself. Find someone that'll help you create that. I guarantee there are other like-minded folks uh, that have similar interests to you on campus if it doesn't already exist. Great advice. Thank you, Brent. That's the questions that I had prepared. Are there any other items that you'd like to share with your colleagues or, you know, any other words of wisdom? Yeah, look, Ashley, I've, I've enjoyed this time. Thanks so much for involving me in this. And uh, I hope to see my fellow alums uh, in future uh, chats and interviews that you do. Um, and I'd also challenge everyone that went through the Honors College, figure out a way that you can give back. It doesn't necessarily have to be monetarily, but think of everything that we were afforded during our four years at Fresno State and in the Honors College. We had the opportunity and access to some of the greatest professors that the university had to offer. We had the ability to have our own office that we could go in and print from whenever we needed. We could take our laptops and we were given a laptop for gosh sake. Uh, you know, thinking about all of the opportunities that were afforded to us, um, you know, not everyone got that opportunity. And to continue to make sure that this legacy will live on for generations to come. Uh, the Honors College obviously is one of those programs that is very unique to the university. Uh, other universities have used the Smith Camp Family Honors College uh, as a guide to setting up their own Honors College. Uh, and it's up to us as alums to make sure that we continue to see the Honors College uh, continue on for years to come. So again, it doesn't have to be monetarily, uh, giving your time, reading applications, volunteering, whatever it might be. Uh, the Honors College has plenty of needs. Um, and if you can give, if you're in an opportunity and position to give monetarily, you know, I would definitely say to consider it when, uh, you know, the end of the year comes around. And if you're looking for where you might need to donate a few dollars from a tax standpoint, consider the Honors College. Uh, they gave a lot to us and, you know, we can obviously never repay all of the tangible or intangible things they gave us, but uh, we can definitely try to make a dent in that. Great. Thank you, Brent. And yeah, thanks for encouraging. And, you know, the other piece to that too, is I think that sometimes it just, you know, it feels good to give. And so to not underestimate that and just to, you know, pay that forward, those feelings and those opportunities that were afforded to us um, and to share that experience is probably the best gift of, of all, especially as, you know, we grow in our professional careers and you know, look back over how much growth we've had as individuals. And so then to, you know, go back on campus and remember when we were fresh out of high school and, you know, had tremendous optimism and hope for the future. And so it's great to be back around that energy and sharing and, you know, those insights and paying it forward ultimately, so. Yeah, completely agree. Well, thank you for your time today. And if anyone would like to get in touch with Brent, we have included his contact information. Um, and we'll look forward to seeing you at one of the alumni reunions coming up in the future. Great, Ashley, thanks so much for putting this together. And uh, I look forward to seeing some of my fellow alums uh, and some upcoming episodes. Um, and at the end of the day, just thanks for uh, everything that uh, the Honors College has done for me. Uh, and hopefully for the folks that watch this, uh, you can reflect back on, on some of the fun that uh, you had during your time at Fresno State. So Ashley, thanks so much. Appreciate your time as well. All right, thanks Brent.